I will start today's the first uh, webinar from the three series webinar. Uh, the first one is the embedded profiler. Um, this is one product uh, from the uh, tasking uh, um, tasking uh, company. And uh, yeah, first of all, I'd like to start to spot uh, basically where or what is the challenge that the embedded profiler tried to solve. And I take snapshot from some survey from the Texas Instruments uh, where it's dated at 2010. The number of lines of uh, car um, uh, codes in a modern car is 10 million lines of code. And uh, up to date, uh, till 2018, uh, this number jumps to 150 million lines of code. And uh, accordingly, you can imagine uh, how uh, complex uh, the source code is and um, yeah, how uh, challenging to get an uh, overview about how to optimize the software in a better um, a way and uh, in a faster way. And uh, accordingly, this uh, affects directly the, uh, uh, your strategy and the time to market uh, strategy that you are uh, implementing. And it's always um, important and helpful uh, to discover uh, the bottlenecks and the problems into your software in earlier uh, design phase. So uh, it would be better if you uh, discover these bottlenecks in the design phase and uh, definitely uh, it will cost uh, less effort and time from your resources. And uh, accordingly, you could save this uh, time to uh, put it into more complex features uh, that you are targeting uh, in your product. So if you discover the bug in the design phase, it will be much effectiver than in the testing phase and then the verification phase. And it will be really very costly if you try to solve the problem after you release the software. And that will cost uh, a lot of uh, time and effort uh, from the development team. And this is basically the problem that the embedded profiler tried to solve. So uh, it's a tool uh, that uh, help you discover the bottlenecks into your software and accordingly um, shows you uh, where uh, the improvements uh, into your software could be. So for the uh, embedded profiler, uh, it's code developed with Invenion. So that means uh, the uh, embedded profiler itself uh, contains the Aurix architecture uh, knowledge inside it. And because it has this Aurix architecture, uh, the developers uh, doesn't need to have really a big, uh, a big experience with, uh, with the hardware or with the Aurix architecture itself. So it targets really um, uh, both as a novice uh, level and the expert level as well. As a tool, uh, identify the problems in one core, if there are some bottlenecks in one core, and uh, identify as well the problems between different calls in a multi-core uh, architecture. And it doing this by measuring the instruction pipeline and the instruction cache and the data caches, and it chooses in a very visualized and numerical values. And this embedded profiler you could use uh, to make profiling for your whole app application if you would like, or if you are, for example, a functional owner, you could run the embedded profiler only for your functions that you uh, are of interest. So uh, on the left side, you will see this is basically the workflow for the embedded profiler. So first uh, you uh, develop your software definitely, and then you flash your software in the uh, ECU. And after that, you run uh, the embedded profiler from the software, from the desktop. And after that, the embedded profiler shows you uh, what are the problems uh, that currently uh, um, running on the hardware and uh, shows you uh, how to um, fix it at the same time. And this is really what I found interesting about this uh, tool. So it doesn't show only the problems or the bottlenecks, but accordingly, uh, it shows you uh, how to fix it at the same time. And this is basically uh, an iterative process. So after you uh, fix the problems, so uh, again, you have to flash your software on the hardware and then go through the process again till you are happy with the performance and with the uh, um, uh, KBIs that you are targeting. And uh, at this phase, uh, the role of the embedded profiler will be achieved. And on the right side of this slide, you will find basically this is are the sources where the embedded profiler uh, gets the information from to show you the, the results or the bottlenecks. So first, the embedded profiler, as mentioned, it contains the Aurix uh, knowledge inside it. So it knows about the hardware itself, uh, the memory layout, and so on. 
and it takes as well uh, as an input uh, the uh, binary file, for example, the alpha files that you already generated from your source code, and it get infos as well from the on-chip performance counters, and it takes all these three resources, and at the end, it generates a bottlenecks, and it shows you uh, these bottlenecks uh, that are um, categorized uh, with um, hazards or the stalls. So stalls, uh, that means uh, the processor is really waiting for some memory operation to be done. So it's not a very good idea that you are not using the processor during this time. And this is the first type of, of the bottlenecks that the embedded profiler can show you. And the second uh, type of the bottlenecks is the hazards and the hazards um, it's categorized into three types the data hazards is two instructions for example there is dependency between them and one instruction need to wait for the other one to be done or structural hazards which is the second type of the hazard and this is basically happening when the two instructions try to access or uh, needs a hardware resource um, at the same time and the last part uh, from this uh, type of bottlenecks next which is the control hazards and uh, for this control hazards basically it means the processor uh, really don't know uh, if um, if there are like branching into your source code so the processor um, doesn't know if uh, the next step will be uh, inside the if statement or else statement for example and this is basically highlighted as well from the control hazard so these are the uh, the uh, uh, bottlenecks uh, that the tool can discover and shows uh, to you uh, for the embedded profiler, you can run three types of analysis. The first one is a performance analysis, uh, the second one is memory analysis, and the third one is a functional level analysis. For the performance analysis, uh, it's basically, um, uh, it makes analysis or, tr or trace the instruction and performance events into your software. So it shows you the um, CPU uh, clock counts. Uh, it uh, shows you as well if uh, the tool find uh, branch misses, uh, cache misses, um, and uh, uh, hazards as well. And you can run uh, this type of analysis for your whole application or for only specific functions that you could specify. And for the second um, uh, type of analysis is a memory analysis and the memory access analysis, it's more concerned about the function call, function return and the data accesses if, um, if it's read or write uh, for different data types. And this is as well, uh, you could run for the whole application or for the specific functions. And the third type of analysis is a functional level analysis. And this is basically concerned only about uh, function call and function return without taking into consideration the data accesses. And this is definitely the fastest analysis because it's more a focus on uh, only function call and function return. So uh, this is on the right side, you can see this is basically the GUI uh, for the embedded profiler. We'll dive more uh, into a demo where uh, I could show you basically uh, what are the, uh, how it looks like and uh, how can you get more information about this tool. But basically uh, what's highlighted in red, it means uh, there are some bottlenecks or problems into your software and what you will find as a pop-up, uh, if you hover onto this uh, red box, you will get more uh, description message about uh, what basically is a problem and how to fix this. Uh, one interesting feature as well uh, uh, with this embedded profiler is you could compare um, um, what you already are done uh, before and after your changes. So you could see uh, the ROI in terms of um, uh, time or effort. So you say, okay, I spent, uh, for example, three hours uh, to fix to fix this problem, uh, how much uh, clock counts, for example, did I save after this changes and so on. So the tool could compare uh, your effort, uh, the, the performance before and after the changes that you apply for, your, for the software. Uh, I will go for um, uh, a demo uh, uh, about uh, this embedded profiler for the Aurex architecture. But before I dive into a demo, I will uh, illustrate for you a bit about uh, the Aurex architecture. So you could see here, um, it's, there are like three cores. There is, uh, for every core, there is a CPU and there is a DMI, which is a data memory uh, interface and BMI, which is BIM, a program memory interface and uh, this is duplicated uh, three times so for every core it contains a CPU and a data memory and an instruction memory and all are connected uh, with uh, a bus 
and as this demo i will develop one application in one core and i will uh, save the data that's needed by this application in the data memory for from the core number two so this is uh how it works the application will run in core number zero and it will try to access a, a data which is uh, saved in the data memory for co from core number two and this really could be uh, a problem because um uh, I need first to uh, jump onto the bus and uh, grab the data from the data memory from core number two and then get back to uh, the application that's running on core number zero. And uh, this is basically one problem that uh, could be spotted uh, by the embedded profiler. And a solution for this problem is I will move the data from the data memory from core number two uh, to uh, the data memory uh, of core number uh, zero. And um, after I did this, I will see the problem uh, is disappeared and no more uh, big clock counts are needed because uh, there is um, I don't need to pay for uh, jumping onto the bus and getting the data from a different core. So I will show you basically how the tool look like now. So uh, this is the embedded profiler. I will minimize everything. I will start from the beginning. Uh, so I did uh, all the um, uh, I did the application and I burned it on the hardware, and I did the changes. Uh, and uh, here I did uh, the performance analysis before the fix and after the fix. And this is basically the first type of the analysis, which is a performance analysis that's mentioned in the presentation a few minutes ago. And if I click here uh, for before the fix, I will see a summary um, a part. And in this part, you will see information about your hardware, about uh, what is the processor, the type and stamp, the execution time for your whole application, as in the core that you are making profiling for at the moment. And at the same time, we'll see here the average stall per clock, which is here, it's um, highlighted in red, and it says it's 0.88. So it means uh, I'm almost 88% of the time, I'm not using uh, the uh, the processor in a more effective way. And if I hover on this um, uh, red uh, box, uh, it shows you here some uh, text says the application has a high rate of stalls, and this could give you uh, some idea uh, if there is a basically a problem or not into your software. And this is only one info, but we'll dive deeper and uh, we'll see uh, more info about how to debug this problem in, in, the, in the next few minutes. And uh, here you will see the performance uh, hotspots. And in this part, you will see all the functions that in that are um, uh, listed into your application or used by your application and here you will find the clock count for every function so here for example i can see uh, there is a, the, some function in the startup code that's taking most of the time and um, the main part uh, the main function which is as well taking a big part so it gives you some visualization about what are the functions that takes uh, most of the time on your application and if i go here into the main function I could see here uh, the source code and inside this uh, source code this is basically the application that I developed and uh, on the right side you could see uh, if the clocks uh, that's used uh, for, for every uh, line of code, uh, the branch misses uh, if already existed, instruction cache misses if it's existed, data cache misses as well, and the more interesting part, which is the stalls. And I can see here there is a really big number of stalls here. It's around 131,000 uh, stalls, and it's, this is a really big number, and it's highlighted here in a red. So that means it's really very bad. Uh, 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 things that's happening here and if I go on to go deeper and see more info about this stalls I could show um, click here on this button that's called show this assembly and this show this assembly it shows as uh, the assembly code for every line of C code uh, that you already developed and if I go back to this line which has a very big number of stalls 
And uh, if I see here, okay, uh, this line of assembly code, it tried to get some data uh, from a core that's um, uh, that's not core number zero, basically. And this is where the problem is. So the tool itself, it shows you the C, it shows you the C code, it shows you as well the assembly code, um, and it shows for every one uh, assembly um, instruction how how many um, installs that happens, and um, the this is basically how to debug the problem. You could see as well this, this assembly uh, for your whole application here. And as well, you will see for every line of code uh, for how many stalls that's happened. And if you go here for the hot functions uh, tab, you will see this is basically the functions that's uh, already used by your application and these are the source files uh, for your software and this is basically the address uh, of the function inside uh, your object and this is definitely could help you debugging in a better way it shows as well the clocks for every function the percentage of time for every function for example here um, as you can see in the previous uh, summary uh, the main uh, function and the c in it it takes really uh, almost 50 percent for the for the C net entry and 50% for the main function you will see as well uh, clocks how many clocks for every function takes how many uh, times this function are called and the average maximum minimum uh, clocks per entry and it shows the jitter uh, per entry as well and it shows uh, the branch misses instruction uh, cache misses and data cache misses and definitely the stalls which is really very important and this is for the hot functions uh, that uh, are highlighted into your application. You could see as well as uh, the source code here, and this is uh, categorized according to uh, the line um, that causes uh, the problems or the most of uh, that consumes the most of the clocks. And you could definitely um, uh, make it like uh, uh, ascending or disascending. And this is the branch misses, instruction cache misses, data cache misses, and stalls again. And this is basically before the fix. So before the fix, as you could see, uh, this is uh, a problem here. Um, it's 0.88 uh, um, uh, average per stall. So I see it like, okay, there is a space to improve uh, the application in 88%, which is really big number. And it takes really uh, not too much time in order to discover where basically the problem in my application is. And this is basically before the fix. If I show the results after the fix, so I basically, after the fix, I move the data from the data memory from core number two to the data memory from core number zero, and I run the embedded profiler again, and this is basically the result. So you could see here the average stall build clock, it's 0.09, so it's almost zero, and if you see it before the fix, it's 0.88, which is really a, a very big improvement uh, if you measure the two numbers. Uh, what's interesting uh, as well about the embedded profiler is you could see for every function if there is an instruction cache misses and data cache misses in a visualized way, which is really uh, save a lot, lot of time if you want to make it uh, uh, in a different way. So this is basically for the performance analysis, which is the first type of analysis. And um, you could see as well here um, the amount of uh, effort that you are, you are saved. So after the changes, this function uh, really reduced the clock count that's used by almost 100. 20, 130,000 clocks, which is a really big number. And for the main as well, it's really saved uh, big um, uh, clock counts. And this is translated into definitely performance and speed of your application onto the Aurix architecture. And this is the performance analysis, which is the first part of the analysis. The second part of the analysis, if you would like to do it, is the memory analysis. And as mentioned, for the memory analysis, it's concentrated more uh, on the functional uh, call and function return and the accesses for the data types that's highlighted by the functions. So if I jump for uh, the analysis that I did before, uh, the fix, so it says here, okay, for the DSPR accesses, 
it's really very huge number of inefficient accesses from core number zero, where the application is running, to the DSPR2, which is the data uh, needed by the application um, uh, on the core number zero. And this uh, as well, it's really very bad. And if I jump uh, here, I could see uh, for uh, every single function, you will find uh, the variable name, you will find the region where this variable is uh, saved. So it could be in the DSPR or flash uh, zero or the LMU, which is a local memory unit, um, uh, or which is a shared memory between the three cores and so on. So you will have your um, uh, whole overview about all functions that you have and for every uh, variable you will see what accesses basically that uh, what or what operations that's done for this variable if it's read or write and how many counts uh, that I use this variable and the percentage uh, of cache misses if there is cache misses uh, exist and this happens for uh, the hot functions of your application or basically the functions that's um, consumed most of the time and you could see here I define in my application uh, an array and save it in the uh, DSPR2 and this was basically a, the problem and after I fix the problem I can see where the X is saved again so after the fix the X is saved in uh, which is the array that I'm using in my application is saved in the DSPR2 which is uh, a scratch bad memory of core number zero and this way I don't need to uh, to use the bus any, anymore and this is basically translated into a better performance and yeah again you could see as well the hot functions into your application you could see as well you could browse the source if you would like from here the whole assembly of your application as well and this is uh, the second part of the memory um, uh, of the analysis that you could use which is the memory analysis and both are done for uh, the whole app for the whole functions that you have in your software and uh, you could uh, as well uh, see if you compare the results you could see as well here um, for every function how many clocks um, that's saved uh, how many entries that's saved so for this function for example uh, one less call um, uh, is uh, needed so that means as a function uh, call is uh, reduced for this function for example uh, you will see as well the maximum clocks per entry it's reduced as well and the minimum minimum clocks per entry is used you will find um, uh, less uh, data cache messes uh, for these two functions and definitely less tools as it happens and yeah this gives you uh, an overview about okay what are the functions that i'm using how to minimize how to optimize these functions in a better way where are the, pro where the problems are and how to spot it and most of most uh, importantly, how to fix such problems in an easier and uh, an effective way. So that's it uh, for the uh, for the tool. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, as a tool, it's it's really interesting if you try to use it it doesn't need any uh, additional hardware from your side so you could integrate it very easy into your application and uh, it fits 100 percent with your with your agile uh, methodology and yeah it fits as well if you are for example a software developer or a functional owner or even a software architect uh, for the whole system uh, so i will jump back to the presentation Okay, so um, yeah, for tasking, uh, tasking it provides uh, not only one tool because we believe yeah there is no one tool that could fit in every single context. So we are uh, developing an ecosystem that solves different challenges or different problem problems uh, when it comes to software development and uh, ADS applications and specifically. So we have our compiler which is uh, Aspice level 2 and definitely this could help you uh, when it comes to uh, certif the certification of your software and we provide it as well as embedded profiler. This is basically what we uh, saw uh, during uh, today's uh, presentation. We are providing the performance libraries as well which is uh, 
of it uh, most probably um, in the ADS applications in a sensor fusion uh, specifically we are providing a cost-effective embedded debugger as well and uh, from the safety side we are providing the safety checker which is uh, will be the topic for the next webinar and the compiler qualification kit as well as that could help you uh, to uh, qualify your tool set uh, against ISO 262662. So this is basically an ecosystem that could help you uh, to develop a better, faster, secure, and um, uh, effective uh, software on the RX architecture. You, you could find as well um, uh, more info about um, uh, the tools itself on these two links under webinars and under white papers as well. And you could request a uh, free trial uh, for the embedded profile or whatever uh, tool uh, uh, that you would like to, to, to try. And uh, this is basically uh, the sales department link. Uh, yeah, as I, as I said, uh, the next uh, webinar, it will be uh, about the tasking safety checker and it uh, um, uh, this is the, sec the second webinar and the third webinar will be for the tasking compiler qualification kit and this basically uh, the two tools that cover the safety aspect uh, from the software. And this is, I think, the last slide, which is uh, shows basically the after lunch seminar. So it will be like three events, one in Karlsruhe and one in München and one in Hanover. All will be in September 11, 12 and 13. And that's it uh, for the embedded profiler. I hope you, uh, you could see the value of it and uh, I hope you could uh, try this as well.